if you can get a pair of Levi's for under 100 bucks, why would anyone spend over 300 bucks on a pair of Japanese jeans? Well, uh, this is Nick at Stridewise.com, and I own like a dozen pairs of uh, Japanese jeans, and some of them I don't have here because I lend them to friends sometimes while I'm breaking in another pair. Right now, I've got some Tanukis on right now. And I've reviewed every last one of these on my channel, uh, except for these sugarcane jeans. I haven't done them yet, but they're coming up. So before we can determine, though, if Japanese jeans are worth it, which is why I clicked on this video, we first have to understand like what Japanese denim is and what sets it apart from the ubiquitous cheaper options like Levi's, which may at first glance appear to be very similar. So the first reason is the weaving. While the term Japanese denim obviously just means any denim produced in Japan, the term is now typically used to mean denim woven in Japan on vintage shuttle looms, as opposed to much faster and more modern projectile looms, which now produce the bulk of the world's denim. These vintage looms are much slower, and they produce rolls of denim only half the width of those typically produced by modern weaving machines, which greatly adds the time required to make a pair of Japanese jeans. These looms are also like 60, 70, 80 years old and require a very skilled craftsman to operate and repair them. So weaving denim in this way on these like old looms produces what's called selvage denim, which means that the edges of the denim are not left like frayed and unfinished as they are in modern production methods, but they're instead wrapped securely with a colored thread. So in the cases like these Mamatara jeans, they use a, a pink one here on the side. You see, it's what you see when you roll up the cuffs, and that's why a lot of guys roll up the cuffs on their jeans. It's kind of to show off the fact that they've got selvage denim, like quality denim. Uh, different brands use different colors. Uh, red, there's samurai in here somewhere. They use like a glittery pink selvage ID to symbolize a glittering sword uh, for a samurai. So it's this selvage line that you see when you roll up the cuffs of your jeans. I know a lot of people are annoyed when they see people rolling their jeans. They say, why don't you just take them to a tailor? Uh, usually that's why. It's to show that they're actually quality jeans. And if you look at like Marlon Brando in the wild one, or you can see like old school selvage denim in these videos. Like this is like the way that old jeans used to be made. And these old looms, they can also be tuned so that they run roughly or chatter. And while it's very hard on the machine itself, it produces beautiful, irregular textures in the denim called a slub. You can see like a good example here, my Studio Datazan jeans. Um, also, like there are a lot of other jeans, like Pure Blue Japan is like very well known for its slub. And it has its own unique feel, and it means that every pair of jeans is individual. So this is one of the things that fans of Japanese denim find really appealing. Like there's almost no end to the different weaves and textures available. So that's the first thing that sets Japanese selvage denim apart from its modern counterparts. It's woven on antique looms, which are slow, relatively rare, and take great skill to maintain and repair, while they produce very unique and interesting fabric. The second is the dyeing. Before denim is woven, however, the threads must first be dyed. And this brings us to our next point of difference. So many Japanese denim houses have, have developed their own proprietary dyeing techniques that have been perfected over generations, some even doing so completely by hand, which is a very time-consuming and labor-intensive process. An example of that is these Sanuki jeans here, uh, which actually cost about 650 bucks uh, because of the unbelievably labor-intensive method of dyeing it. I know that sounds ridiculous, but this is something that kind of reflects a lot of skill, craftsmanship, and generational skill as well that a lot of people find is definitely worth the money. Most modern denim manufacturing will use like a color fast chemical sulfur dyes. While in Japan, many manufacturers will opt for natural indigo dyes. It's not, not all of them, like a lot of the time it is going to be synthetic indigo. But if you're going to find natural indigo dyes, you'll usually find it in Japan. It's a natural process, which the results of which can be very hard to control. But when done right, it can produce denim which fades in glorious electric blue hues. Indigo dyed jeans can appear almost black at first, and the turquoise colors only reveal themselves in time. The third thing that makes Japanese denim stand out in the market is the weight. Japanese denim tends to differ from denim produced elsewhere in terms of like the weight, like the ounces per square yard. Japan produces some very heavy denim, with several brands topping out at 25 ounces per yard, which you can compare with the average pair of Levi's, which come in somewhere between like 11 and 14 ounces, usually more like between like 10 and 12 ounces is usually what you get for Levi's. So when you consider the fact that some Japanese brands get to like 20 ounces, like 25 ounces, you're talking about some seriously heavy material. The heaviest I have here right now, these Pure Blue Japan ones, which are 17 ounces, is kind of like wearing a nice warm carpet. Um, but I've also reviewed some jeans before uh, from Brave Star, which is Japanese denim that are 21.5 ounces per square yard. They're really, really, really thick. So although it's notoriously hard on the old looms that make the denim and it's very difficult to sew, 
Heavy denim offers the wearer not only some added longevity, but also incredible fade potential as the creases tend to become more pronounced in the thicker, stiffer fabric. It takes a lot more raw material as well to produce a pair of jeans at that kind of weight, and it also adds to the cost of production in doing so. It's another reason why they're so expensive. The next thing on this list is the fact that these jeans are raw. So many Japanese brands sell jeans that shrink to fit, which is the way that jeans were made 100 years ago. The vast majority of jeans in your local shop have gone through processes, like your non-Japanese jeans, I mean, at local shops. The average pair of jeans that you go and buy in the shop has gone through processes to make them soft and wearable right off of the shelf. And also to ensure they don't shrink after washing. That makes very unhappy customers. One such process for making the jeans like uh, more comfy off the rack is called sanferization, which came into use in the 1930s and it kind of took the guesswork out of properly sizing your jeans. Up until that point, all denim was unsanferized, also referred to as raw or loom state denim. And it would shrink markedly after washing, which made buying the proper size jeans like quite tricky. Levi's has this famous mantra, shrink to fit, and it came from these early days of using raw denim, when most people were using raw denim. Although a lot of Japanese denim is indeed sanferized, a lot of it is sold raw. While this means it can be cardboard stiff at first, most denim enthusiasts love the raw feel of unsanferized denim, and they see the shrinkage as part of the journey that jeans must go through to eventually crease, bend and mold perfectly to your body. Uh, a good example of that are these Studio Dartisan jeans. They were my very first pair of jeans. I got them at Self Edge here in New York City. And uh, when I got them, I had to put them in a, big, uh, in a big garbage bag. I didn't have a bathtub. I put them in a big garbage bag full of warm water to shrink them, which made it difficult at the shop because when I got them, they were kind of hanging off my waist a little bit. But uh, it was raw denim. It was unsanfrized raw denim. So you get the jeans, you take them home, you soak them in the bath, and then they shrink. Then you might wear them as they dry to help them like mold to shave your body. Uh, this all seems very elaborate to a lot of people who are not in the sort of raw denim community. But for the guys in the community, uh, that's the sort of like um, you take part in the creation of your jeans. And that's like really at the end of the day, what people really like about this particular type of denim. The fifth reason Japanese jeans are expensive is the hardware and the details. Uh, so jeans are not constructed from denim alone. So if you take a look at the rivets and the buttons on a good pair of Japanese jeans, and you will often see that they tend to be a cut above those produced elsewhere. Most Japanese brands will have buttons and rivets specially made, which bear like the company name, logo, or other special design. Some brands even have different hardware for each model they produce. You can see, for example, uh, Samurai is a brand that has a very kind of dizzying array of rivets and buttons on offer. I've got a pair here. I'm going to walk you through in a little bit. The same can also be said for the materials used for the pockets, like on these ones here, for example, the Samurais. Uh, you've got jacquard stitching on the pocket bags. So there are all these uh, Japanese characters written on the pocket bags here. Apparently, they just mean Samurai jeans, but it's like a very cool like little touch. Uh, other details can include using the selvage edge for the coin pocket, which you can see a little bit here. This is the pair of jeans I mentioned earlier that has the uh, glittery pink selvage ID to symbolize the samurai sword. Number six on the list uh, of why Japanese jeans tend to be pricey is the vintage styles. Many Japanese jeans are period perfect replicas of the jeans worn in the early or mid 20th century. So at the beginning of Japan's like denim boom, which is considered to be in the 1980s and 90s, most manufacturers were focusing only on producing period perfect replicas of vintage American work and cowboy wear. So while most denim houses have now generally moved away from these reproductions, several still specialize in it. A good example, where is it? These full count jeans that I've got here. These jeans are like practically identical replicas of like old Levi's um, down to like using cotton thread into the polyester thread that's more common elsewhere, the fit, all this other kind of stuff, the weight of the denim, everything. I made a whole video all about it. But like if you want a pair of like, 1890 overalls that are made just like the originals or a perfectly made pair of like Levi's 501s made in 1944. Uh, that's actually not a problem. Like some Japanese jeans makers will actually reproduce the cuts, the denim, the threads and the vintage hardware that made these classic jeans models classics. So like for some nostalgic denim fans, just being able to purchase exact reproductions of their favorite styles from yesteryear more than justifies the price tag. Again, uh, full count is a really good place to start if that's what's really kind of drawing you to Japanese denim. The last reason why Japanese jeans are so expensive is the exclusivity. Because sometimes we just want something that nobody else around us has. <laughs> because like comparatively speaking, most Japanese denim companies produce very small numbers of jeans. 
Some companies are literally family affairs, like they just rely on a single loom for all of their denim. And if you're lucky enough to visit Japan, you can literally walk into some of these shops and talk to the person who created the company and who also created your jeans, like the very jeans you're wearing. So besides the fact that it's pretty cool to talk to someone who's made your own jeans, uh, this is also something that would be very unlikely, if not impossible, with the huge conglomerates that are pumping out thousands of cookie cutter jeans in a day in like huge automated offshore factories. So there's a, a personal touch and a sort of a familiarity that you don't really get with other brands. And again, because there's such limited quantities, the fact that you, you can know that you're wearing a jean where like only uh, a dozen or so pairs of this particular pair of jeans were made in the world. So that's like, a, that's also a nice feeling. It gives a sort of a sense of identity in a world of fast fashion where there are just like thousands if not millions of the same exact item of clothing you know so that's a it's a nice personal touch and exclusivity yes that a lot of people like so uh those are the seven reasons i came up with as to why uh japanese denim is so expensive it does have downsides of course uh japanese jeans are not cheap typically they're you know 250 to 400 bucks uh raw denim can be uncomfortable at first a lot a lot of japanese denim is not actually raw to be fair i, I should emphasize that but uh, i have worn uh, raw denim before but uh Raw and selvage aren't actually the exact same thing. Selvage is more what we're talking about here. Uh, they just often tend to be raw. Uh, patience and infrequent washing is also required to get those high contrast fades. A lot of guys like they'll only wash their jeans uh, a couple times a year. I don't recommend that. I don't think it's worth it, honestly. But I would wash them, you know, every couple of months, like maybe a few times a year. But uh, you know, I wouldn't wash them every day. Definitely, you can definitely wear them uh, a good couple dozen times before you wear them you wash them if you want to you don't have to um heavy denim it can also get like kind of hot in some climates that's worth mentioning but if you do like different weights of denim there are actually companies that will uh i think i think tanuki is one of them um and also uh, sugarcane is another one there are plenty of companies that they'll come out with lighter jeans that you'll typically get uh in uh from like levi's and so on so i actually have an article on that in the description below if you want like really nice light summer weight jeans uh, naked and famous has plenty of that as well um the main downside i think with japanese jeans is that sizing is tricky if you're ordering online especially for unsand fries jeans it's really it's, it's it's terrifying to buy jeans online. They cost like a whole ton of money. They get shipped over from Japan and they get there and then they don't really fit you and you're not sure how much they're going to stretch and that whole thing, it's a real headache. I'm very lucky I live in New York City where we have like really big uh, kind of beloved denim stores for selvage denim like Blue and Green and in Soho and Self Edge in the East Village. I go to those a lot. Um, Otherwise, but I have got plenty of jeans online and a lot of the time, a lot of the time they don't really fit all that well. So what you need to do is just like kind of get a measuring tape to go around your waist because most people think they know their size and they don't because most jeans do vanity sizing. Um, so that's something you need to be mindful of. Get a measuring tape if you're going to be buying jeans online. All right, that's my very, very thorough guide to uh, why Japanese jeans are different to just the average Levi's you get at the shop. Uh, so whether or not it's worth it is up to you. It's all very subjective. I just gave you all the pros and cons and everything. I think they are. I very much like wearing in Japanese jeans. Um, it's better to have fewer pairs. You shouldn't have as many pairs as I do because the fewer pairs you have, the more you wear them, the more you can get these really nice fades that are kind of the whole point uh, for many people of wearing Japanese jeans. Um, let me know in the description below. If you have Japanese jeans, what's your favorite brand, all that kind of stuff. And make sure you subscribe too. Because I got a lot more uh, raw denim stuff, uh, heritage boots, and other sort of like old fashioned quality heritage clothing coming up on my channel.